Let's create an approval flow where an employee can make a holiday request, a manager can approve or reject, and the employee will get a response back with an email. We will use a combination of Microsoft Forms to take the input from the employee, Microsoft Power Automate to create an approval flow, then we will send it to Teams and Outlook for the manager to approve or reject. And again, we will use Microsoft Power Automate to collect that response and send an email to the employee. Let's take it step by step. Please just do it with me. And if things goes too fast, just pause or rewind the video. It's designed for that. To take the input, we will go to Microsoft Forms. So go to office.com, click Create, and choose Form. Here is an empty form. We will take name and amount of days, but you could create a more advanced form if you want that. I'll just say text. Here I'll say name and make it a required field. We want the employee to fill in the name. We will say add new text amount of days. This is also required and we will restrict it to numbers. That's it. And again, a very simplified Form. This is not really you wanted to make at least a date span by date picker, but you can do that by saying add new if you want it. Let's give it a title. I will say holiday request. I will also move to theme and then let's pick a background. I'll choose the snowboarder as this is a holiday request, but feel free to choose another one. Then when I click collect responses, here I can choose that this form will only be visible to the people in my organization. That will make sense in this case since these are holiday requests. But you can choose to have anyone um, accessing it. I will click copy. Then I can go to a new tab, paste in my form. There it is. Now I can start to fill these things in. But first, let's configure Microsoft Power Automate to handle that uh, this uh, request has ran and we must do something. So I go to Power Automate, then I'll click Create. Choose an automated cloud flow since our trigger is whenever a Microsoft Forms holiday request has been received, we want to run the flow. Let's give our flow a name. I will say holiday request. And here you will choose the when a new response is submitted. In case now mine is first, in case you don't see it, simply just say when a new response is submitted and choose the trigger here, like create. Then we will see a drop down in a little while. Here it is. Here you will pick the holiday request. So this is our trigger. So whenever our flow run, we know that a new response is submitted. This trigger generates a response ID that we will get to get the details out of that ID. Click the new step. Here you will find a get response ID and get the response details. Sorry, we will choose the form ID that will be the holiday request and the response ID. We can get that dynamically from up here by simply just choosing it. Let's try to run it. So when I click save here, then my flow is ready. It will actually trigger whenever I put something in here in the holiday request. So let's try that. Say Anders and 100. Now my flow will be running. And if I go back here to the overview, you can see that if I just uh, refresh this, you will see that in a few seconds now we will refresh it. Then our flow ran. So when I click in here, I can go into the get response details. Here you can see that my name is Anders. That is the requested um, name. The amount of days is 100. My email is also here. And that is because Microsoft Forms grab the email if it's inside the organization. We also have a submission time. And this is actually a product of a JSON. So if I go to show raw outputs, this is the JSON. And as you know, we work a lot with JSONs as Power Automate developers. Again, a JSON is, uh, you can recognize it by this curly bracket in the start and in the end, and a lot of key value pairs. Well, let me just copy it over. 
I like to copy all these ones here that I'm going to work with over to a JSON beautifier. I choose JSON crack, but you can easily just Google JSON beautifier if you want something else. Here I go over to the left. Control A to mark everything, Control V to override. So here it is. And here you can see that the body that is the, uh, the data that we want to get mostly, that will be the responder, the submit date, and this is actually the name, a code for that, and these are the dates. So this is what we're going to work with. Luckily, Power Automate lets us get these ones out automatically, but now you know again where they're from. I like to repeat things. Then we go into Power Automate. Let's start by creating our approval flow. I'll take new step. And here, if you search for approval, here we can start and wait for an approval. That means that we can start an approval, we can send uh, this holiday request to a manager, then the flow will go into a waiting stage, where it will just wait for a response. Then when the response has been received, the flow will start again. You can also split it up by creating an approval and wait for an approval. But since we're going to need both, we will pick this one. So the approval types, here we have several ones. We have um, the approve, reject. That is, the manager can say approve or reject, or the employee can do it. We can also uh, choose that the first one to respond, that will be the answer. Or if we send it to several managers, then we must gather all the responses before this flow will restart. We can make custom responses, that is, instead of approve or reject, we could say yes, no, or bad, okay, whatever we wanted. I will choose an approve, reject, and the first to respond, since this is only, this holiday request will only be sent to one manager. That's it. Then we can fill in some details. Here in the title, I want to say, approve holidays, requested by and then I want the employee's name. We got it up here in the get response details. Remember, we also saw it here in um, the JSON where the body says that this one here says Anders, but we can also find it over in the dynamic content. In case you don't see it like this, simply just click add dynamic content. And here we will choose the name. So this is just a title and overview. Now the manager know, knows what this is about. Then we will put in the email address of the manager that we want to send it to. We can send it to several runs, just uh, separated them by semicolon. I will only send it to one and this will be, in my case, will be myself. I will be the manager, but um, it could be my wife. She's also a part of the company, but let's, just, let's not spam her. We will just send it to me. Then we can uh, put in some details. Here I want just to go simple first. We'll go very advanced later in the video. So stick uh, with me. You will learn a lot. I promise you that. I'll say employee name. And here we can also have the days requested. That will be the amount of days. So now when I save it, I can put in another response. And then we will see what will happen. So I'll go to my Microsoft Forms, submit another response. So this will be Anders. He will be requesting 200 days. He will click Submit. In a little while, we will get a notification here in Teams saying that we need to go to something. Here you can see it, um, that we requested holidays. And uh, the employee is Anders. Days requested 200. We can add some comments uh, to our uh, rejection or approval. We can also see the more actions. We can cancel it, the whole thing. We can follow up. That means that we will pass every approver. Again, they will receive another notification here. We can also choose to reassign, send it to another manager. Let's just say Anna's really deserve this. So we will just say have a good vacation and we will click approve. Now this flow is over. We can see that the final status is approved and the flow is done. Then I can go back to Power Automate. I go out, out here to my log sign. I can uh, refresh it. And here we have um, the second one. If I go in here, 
we can see that we uh, start and wait for an approval. And here, if I go a little bit down, we can see we can have some, we can see the outcome is approved. We approved the, the flow. And if I go into this JSON here, we have, uh, for example, the comments and so forth. Let's grab everything. So I go up here to output and then I say take show raw outputs. Again, I copy it out. Go to another JSON beautifier tab. Simply just open up another tab and go to JSON crack. Mark everything and this is it. I know that I have to work with this a bit. So I want to save it here. Here, the important thing is I want to look at the outcome. That is a proof. If it was rejected, it would say reject. And we also have some other uh, whenever the, the quest was made and the completion date, then inside the responses, this is a bit more tricky, we can easily get uh, the outcome out, for example. But since um, we can have more than one response, in our case, we only had one response, that was the manager, me. But imagine that we sent this to 10 managers, and we have some responses back, we said that Every 10, all 10 of them must approve, then we would have 10 responses in this array. You can see it is an array inside this JSON by these hard brackets start here and in the end. So one of these starting here and then uh, ending here, this will be all of this, this will be one response. So this isn't part of an array. You might find it a bit complicated since we only have one response, but it's still an array and we need to refer to it as such. Here we can, um, we can start to get things out. And what I want to get out from this tricky part, since this is not, um, we cannot get it out per standard, that will be the comments, the email and the display name, in case we had more responses, then we could loop through it by an apply to each in Power Automate. But let's create the expression first, it will become very easy for you. So Let's find a notepad. It's always nice when we develop to use a notepad to save the actual uh, expressions to both so we can easily reuse them. We have them accessible and also save them into our developers notes. So we have them uh, next time we want to do this and we can use them as a simple library. So what I want here, I want the comments. I also want the responders display name. Let's uh, that's this one up here. And I want the responders email. So um, what I want to do to get everything out here, and let's just uh, start by taking the comments, that will be outputs, then a parentheses, single quotation marks, then I want the name now I'm just writing with human words, the name of the action, then I want a single quotation mark and a parenthesis and the name of the action. Let us go in here, that is the start and wait for an approval. So I can delete this name, or name of action. And then I can say start a space that is an underscore. So start and wait or and approval. Hopefully this is right. So and then we want to move a little bit in because this will give us everything we're not interested in the entire JSON. Let me go here. This will get us all this. So we want to move in. I know that uh, we want to go into the body to go into the body, I can do this, a hard bracket start single quotation marks, and hard bracket end. Then inside these two single quotation marks, I'll say body. That means I moved into the body. Then I want to move into the responses. So because I want to go in here and pick the first responses, this response, I'll have another question mark, hard brackets, and I want to say responses like this. I want to pick the first one. I know that there's only one. So you might say, why do we need to do that? Well, that's just the way it is. Here, I'm just saying without the question mark, I'm just saying zero, without the single quotation marks. So I get the first element of responses, then to get the comments out, then I'm here, I can just see that this 
comments is apparent in the responses. So I simply just say another question mark, hard brackets, single quotation marks, comments, like this. So now I get the comments out. And similarly, I, um, I will get the first uh, response by when I want to display name and email since we only have one response and that's the one we're using all the time. Just cheat a bit. It's not cheat, it's just reusability like this. And let us just have another uh, space in between. So here, instead of, I don't want to go into the comments, I want to move into the responder up here. So here, I will simply just say, and you, I hope you get the drill, otherwise we will practice it a lot. Then I want to, since I want to grab the display name, I simply just go inside uh, the next one here, say display name like this. And below here, let's just practice it again. I will again go into the responder, add bracket, and then the question mark. And here I want to get the email. I'll just say email like this. Now I have three expressions that I can use in my email to the employee because we want to send something to the employee. But let's just talk a bit about this comments because um, we saw that we got a comment here, have a good vacation. But this comments is only present whenever we put in a comment. If we, oh, let's just uh, make another response here. I'll just say Anders, let's just take one day, we will submit it. And then we will try to reject it. So we can also see this works. So if I go in here, now we will not add a comment, I will reject it here. Uh, fine. And if I go into Power Automate, I go back here, then we can see we have another one here. So I'll click it. And if I go in here, you can see that in this JSON, we don't have um, up here, um, we have the outcome that is reject, we knew that, but we don't have a comment tied uh, to it here in the responses. That is because we don't added a comment. So we will also handle that. But one step at a time. So let's uh, now we know that we got the response details, we send it to the manager, then the manager has re approved or rejected, we can send an email to the employee. So I'll choose new step. And here I'll find an send and email like this, we will send it to the employee. And um, here, when I click in here, then I want to add the dynamic content. I want to send it to the responders email because we know that this request was sent in by the actual employee. So we will just use the email from the forms respond. So don't choose the responses approval email that will send it back to the manager. We will take it here. You can, of course, uh, show advanced options, then send it to the manager in CC or BCC. If you want it, we don't want to do it now. Then we want a subject here, we will say your holiday request, and we'll say God, and we will choose the outcome of this approval flow. And let me again show it to you. So here, uh, this one was the one that got approved. The outcome here, that is approved. I know that uh, the actual uh, language here, uh, the ending is a bit uh, grammar, grammarly uh, wrong. Uh, that's fine, we will fix it in uh, some minutes. So for now, we will just say that this one is the outcome and this will say your holiday request got approved. Cannot say that in English, but it's better than nothing. And again, we will work with our solution. This will be the perfect solution in the end. Then we can send the email. Here I'll say, hey, let's use the name of the employee. And we got that one down here. So we will say, hey, and we'll say, you are holiday request off. And we will use the actual days that the employees requested. Um, and then I'll say day like this, because we don't know if it's one or more days. 
then we will say got we will use the outcome again and again we will short this into right English and now we will um, uh, so here we can see that your holiday request or x days got approved or rejected and we also want to say who who did that this to you or who was nice to you so we will say bye and now we will use because we want to move into the responses we want to move into if we choose this this power automate will create an apply to each and then we'll need to handle this but since and you can definitely use that if you send it to multiple managers but since we only send it to one we will just create an expression we already did that if i go here we will take the responders dis display name just take this and copy the expression here go back here let us go down here take expression paste it in control v make sure you are in expression then click ok now we have it Let's also add a dot here. Then we will say, have a great day. So this is it. Uh, let's see if this works. Then if this works, we will fine tune it. We will uh, adding the comments. If we have any, we will make this nice looking. We will make the actual approval in Teams nicer looking, but one step at a time. Let me just save it here and do another request. So now I will say Carl, he will request eight days. He will click submit. So now we have another request here. We can see the approval. Um, dude, have a, have a good one. We don't handle uh, the comments, but uh, let's just be nice and say approve. So now, this one got approved. And if uh, I go into my flow again, go one back to the lock, we can see that our flow ran and we have sent an email. The email, I'll just go over here. Email is here. Hey Carl, your holiday request of eight days got approved. I know we missed the ending by Anders Jensen. Have a great day. Isn't that wonderful? Now we actually send the response back to the employee. So what we just need to do is to make this prettier, include the comments if we have any. Make sure you stick because this is very important. You'll learn a lot about expression and these flows. So let's get at it. We will start by tuning in whatever the manager sees here in Teams and we get it. We can use Markdown for this approval. So we have it here. We can add bold by simply just adding to asterisk here, to here, then the employee will be bold. So you need to surround them by asterisk two. I have two here. Yeah. I think I also want to include the email of the actual uh, employee if we want to maybe write them before we do something. Maybe we want some more details. I'll have it here. So what I will do is simply just put it in uh, between the employee and the days requested. Here I'll say employee like this. So to use, uh, to create a link in Markdown, what you want to do in hard brackets, you will have your link text. I'll just write it with human language. Then we'll, it will be very easy to fill in. And here we will have the link URL. So what will we be using? Let's just have the actual email. That will be the responder's email. So I just go in here and let me just delete the link text again. This was just so you can see what you wanted. Then I want the responder's email. And likewise here in the link URL, I will add the responder's email. So now uh, we can click this email, see it in a little while. This is the first um, that we fixed. And again, we can just uh, can actually just save it. It's we don't need to click test. This is just an old habit because when I test it, we usually have to do it. But since this is triggered, it already works. I can just submit another response. And now let's say Dora. Dora wants eight days. We'll click submit. 
then we will get the actual flow down here. And here we can add, start adding some comments. Still, the comments, we don't really use them yet, but we will, of course. Now I can just reject it. And um, the flow finished. So now when I go here, I can um, see that we have it here and we have sent an email. So here it says, hey, Dora, your holiday request. And in a little while, we'll have it in mailbox. Um, and then I can show you this actual email. Here it is. So, um, hey, Dora, uh, your holiday request of eight days got rejected by Anders Jensen. Have a great day. And what we wanted to see, and let's just uh, make sure that uh, you saw it here, then oh, it's not this one. This one was the one. But here we had the actual employee in bold. We have the email and with a clickable link. You can see it opens up an email to the employee. And just move it. And we have the days requested with all of these in bold. So we fixed one of our problems. We also have a problem with grammar. And let me just... Uh, Show the email again. What I want here. Here, your holidays request got. I want to say rejected and not reject. And I also want to say rejected here. So um, let's take one step at a time. Let us click edit here. So I will, we can do a lot of things. We can make expressions, make an if here, or we can make an place. But the easiest thing will just be to initialize a variable that will hold the actual value that we want to put in. So I go up here, add an action. Here I'll say initialize variable and our variable name. I'll just call it the outcome. Here we'll store it. Make sure you change it to a string. I will just rename this. This is just always best practice just to make sure that uh, just you can see what's going on without if it looks like this, you can see what's going on. Now, whenever we get this approval, we will start asking what is the outcome? If it's approved, we will change this variable to approved. If it's reject, we will change this variable to reject and then use it in the email. So I go into the plus and then add an action. Here, you will have a switch. The switch is an advanced if. We will evaluate on something and then we make cases. Here, I want to evaluate on the outcome from up here. So go in the start and wait for an approval, pick the outcome. Then we will have the first case. Let's have this one here. This is the case approved. This is whenever this one equals approve. So I'll say proof. Then we want to do something. What do we want to do? I want to change this variable to approved. So I go into add an action, I'll set variable. Yeah, this is the outcome, I'll set that to approved. I'll add another case by clicking this plus here. And here, I will say this is the case reject. This is whenever it's, it's uh, the outcome is re reject, then I'll set the variable to Reject it. And again, here I could actually these as well. So set variable. Uh, outcome to approve. And again, I'll do the same here. And I'll set it to um, say rename. So set variable outcome to reject. And then the name will actually be that. That will be rejected. So now I have the correct spelling these two ends, then I can use it in my send an email. So instead of this outcome, I'll use my variable called outcome, delete this, choose the variables up here, delete this, and choose the outcome here. Now let's just click save and fill in another holiday request and see if this has changed. Submit another response. Here I will say, I'm not sure, I will say uh, Elo. Elo wants four days. Now we will have our nice proof um, form that we saw before. Um, we will, this will pop up in Teams in a few seconds. And then we can start to actually 
uh, reject or approve it. And uh, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer. Now you can see that uh, this uh, this hasn't showed up in our teams. And uh, this was our last one. So we'll just have to wait. Now it, here it is. And here we can see the ELO wants, and it's nice again, employee ELO, email, blah, blah, blah. We can do something. Since we only want a response if it's rejected or approved, the right ending, we just say approve. And um, this is approved, fine. And if I go back here, I will just take a look at my email inbox. We can see that uh, this succeeded. And if I just inspect it in here, we can see send an email, your holiday request got approved. And again, if I open up this one here, we fixed the ending. We now have the approved and approved down here. And um, this will actually also, uh, of course, work whenever we reject something. Now uh, we want to add the actual comments because um, the approver can add comments to uh, to this flow and we want to handle it accordingly so where do i want to edit i'll just click edit here i want to let me go in here i want to say bye and then uh, we want to say if we have a comment then we want to have a space and then we want to say something like uh, with the, the following comment and um, that's just uh, the way we want to have it. So we will have an expression here. This one will again be a little bit longer. So we will practice in Notepad. Do it here on our practice. We will create it in our Notepad. First of all, we want to check if comments are empty. And this is because um, empty, yeah, that's right. And let me just go over here. So we want to say, um, we want to look up this comments and then we want to ask is this empty if it is empty then we don't want to do something if it's not empty that means that we have something in it then this value will be false our check and then we will write it out so what we will do is check if um, this comments are empty and this will we can just use the empty function so i'll say empty then i'll have a parenthesis start and end then we want to check something move in here since we already have the expression for comments this is why we just keep it in our notepad so we always have it by our hand so i copy it so now i check it so this one's uh, will actually um this will check if it's empty if it's false then we want to do something if it's true we just want to return a null value to set it in Remember, null is a value that's not initialized. It's not even empty. It's just nothing. So we'll just move one below. Again, I really hope you do these uh, expressions. They will help you a lot. So I will say if comments are not empty, then display them. Um, and here we want to look at an if. We want to say um, an if uh, can an if means that we ask a question and then we'll have a true branch and a false branch. So um, it looks like this. So if comments are not empty, then we want to display them. And here I want to say, and let me just uh, tell you what an if function is. This is another nice power automate function. So an if ask a question and here this will be a boolean this can be true or false then we want to say uh, do this if uh, true and then do uh, this if false so this is an if and we can just have a space so it's a bit more easy now we can just fill things in so we ask something and what do I ask here? Well, we already create that. That is this one here because we know if this one is false, then we want to display the comments. We know that we have comments. If this one is true, that means that this is empty. We just want to display nothing or a null value. So this one will be our actual. And now you can see why we created a notepad. It will be impossible to create in Power Automate. We will have a lot of things. 
what do we want to do if it's true? Well, we just want to do literally nothing. So here I just say null. And then I want to say what I do when it's false. That means that it's not empty. We have something in comments. Well, then I just want to display the comments. And we have the comments up here. Like this. And again, I know that uh, this one is actually uh, quite long. So and we have the outputs. And then we have the actual comments maybe uh, we you know we don't miss and do we miss and mm -mm, we don't miss uh, we don't miss a parenthesis because uh, we don't have a parenthesis here this is the parenthesis from the if and again i know that this can be longer just try you will get used to it then we also want to say um let's put in a uh, let's put in a string uh, we don't we, we want to put in the comments but we also want to put in something like with the following comment and then the comment. So er, again, uh, let me just go here. What we want to do here is to concat. So here I want to say concat a fixed string and comments. It will er, look like this. I want to say concat. And then uh, so here I'll say now I just write it in human language again, item one, item two, and like this. We want to say the first one here that will be with the following comments. So here, again, in single quotation marks, since it's a string, we will write it in here. So here I'll say with the following comment, and I want to have a colon and like this. And then we want to just uh, put in the comments, I'll have it here in the item two. So we're taking these two together, and it will look nice nicer in our email. Now, we will expand a bit on this. So I want to say if comments are not empty, then we want to display them and the text. So we will use this one up here. And then let me just and you will be so happy about this notepad whenever you write this ex these expressions because we will use them. And then instead of just displaying the comments, we will display the concat here. So we have it here. We will be and do we need another when this is yeah, we have it here. So this is what we want to actually write in. This is the entire expression. And again, if you have to write this in once, it will be completely uh, difficult to put in. So just take it step by step like we did here, or rewind the video, then copy it over. This is our expression. So control C, we will go in here. Since we wanted to go in here, so go right in before the dot, and we will just here, go into expression. And let's just do it again. And now when you see this, now I can't really see the dynamic expression. There's only one thing to do sometimes that is just to click save. And let's just do this. And now it's here. So what you want to do is something sometimes just to save, then uh, there's minor box here, then you just put in the expression, it will say that it's invalid, it's not hopefully not. No, it's not. So now we have this long here. Now let's try to add in a comment and see if it gets added nicely here. We'll also test by uh, we'll save it here. We will also test when we have no comments. But we'll make a ho another holiday request. And here, uh, we want to say Google. And Google wants four days, let's try to not make a comment first and then make a comment, see that we can handle back best both branches, sorry. So now Google sends a request of four days, we will just reject reject it. And then we will see that in our emails that we will not have the email added. This is what we want to do now. Again, here, here we have it. 
Uh, this one looks fine. You can see your holiday request got rejected by Anders Jensen. We also want to see if it works with the comments because that's what we created here. We wanted to add the comments if the manager send any. So we will go back to the forms and submit the response. And again, here I will say ANS. ANS wants five days. Now let's try to approve it with a comment. So Hans sent this. And um, we will have it here. Uh, have a great vacation. Vacation. Hansi. So um, click approve. So now we have a comment that we can actually see if it's worked. I'll click it here. Here you have it. That's it. Your holiday request of five days got approved by Anna Jensen with the following comment. Have a great vacation, Hansi. That means that we add the comment whenever it's present and we will simply just ignore it if we don't find a comment. So these expressions comes in very handy. I will leave this uh, entire note pad on the course page if you want them or simply just, uh, yeah, you can just go to the course page. Um, that is uh, from here, just choose approval flows and you will find the course page. Now let's just do one other things because um, we have this email and let me just open up the Hansi again. It could be nice if we could email uh, again, it's just customization, but that's what's like 95% of our um, time goes with at Power Automate Developers. It could be nice if I could click on this on Jensen and be taken to the manager's uh, actual email. Remember, we created an expression for that. We found it over, that was here, the email, and we created up here in the responder's email. So we have the expression for that. Let's see how we can create it. So in the send an email, we will go a little bit down. We want to say, um, now we want to, to make it, we want to to look at it as um, want to to click this one here, and we will uh, now we view it as uh, HTML. Here we can see the br that is uh, breaks here, and what we want to do, since we want to um, we want to have a link that will be the mail to, and then we will uh, use this output since this was our name. Remember that is the display name. We want to use that as the text for the link. It looks like this. So I go up here to buy. Then I move uh, here. Then that let me that is here. That now I'm just one uh, one behind the outputs. I'll make uh, this one here. Then I'll say R. Then I'll say H ref. It is this is the actual link. So um, what I want to do here is simply just um, say um, uh, href and then we want the email. And here, uh, what it was this, but this looks like, let me just uh, have the, we will have the email address in, in a little while. I'll just do this. And then I want to close it like this. So this is the email address. I'll put in the email address right here in the expression in a few seconds. But now I want to move in. Um, and since I need to move in, I need to place my mouse here. Now I move to, since the output to display name, that is the text for the link. Then I'll move one to the right with the arrow. You, uh, you can't see it, but it should be your mouse blinking between the outputs and the actual ifs. So now here I want to uh, to stop it and I'll do that by making another one of these. Then I'll have a forward slash an A and like this. Now I just need to fix the actual email address with the expression for the responder's email. And we already have that, um, this expression. We will not use it from here since it's not present. If you uh, choose it from here, uh, then uh, you will be having a, uh, if you choose any of these from the responders, then you will have an apply to each. We're not interested in that. I will just use this one. I hopefully uh, it's, uh, it looks right. 
this is the expression that I want to use. So I go over here again, and instead of this email at, I'll paste in, delete it. I'll do an expression, I'll do this, and it says invalid, it's not, you can just do it twice. So now we, we're using, uh, this is the link, um, this is the actual link, and then we have um, the actual name here. We also need to say that um, when we want to make this a clickable email link, then we want to, in front of this, we want to say mail to, and then a colon, and then the actual email address. This is just the way links work. And here you can also see that uh, now we are um, um, we're behind, and that's fine. So it's just to, to make sure that uh, we have everything right. We can also, um, we can also uh, write a subject of the email. So if the employee puts in, uh, that, that clicks on this link, then we can also add a subject. And here, I really want just to add the subject above here and then with a re in front. So just go up here, control C. So to add a subject uh, right after this one here, here we will say mail to, and then we can just uh, go here, we'll say a question mark, then I can say subject, and then we can say equals, and then we can say something like this, control V. I know it looks messy, but this is the way you build these. Now, when I click save here, we can try to test our flow to see that we have a clickable link in the actual email. Let's fill in another response. Here, since this is me, I will say, Anders, let's take a, a thousand days of vacation. Well, let, let me myself approve this um, with a comment. Let's see everything works. Um, if this video helped you, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you. And this really helps the channel. So um, if, if you are actually doing this, uh, thank you. I will click approve. And then we will have an email in a few seconds. And let's see that we have a clickable link on that. And we uh, just uh, watch my inbox on the other screen. And we can also see that uh, if I go back here, um, this one succeeded, uh, and we will have the email shortly. Now we have uh, this actual link. And um, when I click it, you can see that I send an email to the manager. This is the email that we're taking. And we have a subject. I prepared the next nice Power Automate video for your automation journey. Just click it right up here.